video, I wanted to help you live beautifully inside and out by breaking down the science behind AHA and BHA acids. I want to explain what they are, why they matter, and kind of how they're going to help your skin. So you've probably heard of AHA and BHA acids from the back of your skincare labels, but a lot of people don't really know what they mean, how they can help acne, how they can help anti-aging, etc. And why the hell is this important to know? Well, if you think about it, if you understand how these chemicals and products work, you're going to have a better chance at clearing your skin. It's kind of like someone who's trying to lose weight. If they eat out at a restaurant, they're not exactly going to know what's in the food. Whereas if they cook food at home, they're going to know exactly what's in it and they're going to be able to maintain their weight better. So when it comes to skincare, it's the same principle. If you educate yourself about it, you're going to understand it a bit better and have a better chance at clearing your skin. So let's talk about these acids. First off, AHA and BHA stand for alpha hydroxy acid and beta hydroxy acid. They are pretty similar because they are both chemical exfoliants that work to exfoliate your skin to brighten and to help with acne and wrinkles, but there are a lot of differences between them when you get down to it. And I know the word acid can sound scary, but when we talk about acids it's really just talking about how acidic or basic something is if you want to like jump back into grade school do you remember the pH scale the pH scale is how chemists and scientists identify how acidic or how basic something is water is neutral at about seven and your skin is a little bit more on the acidic side so maybe a five or a six with good balance whereas battery acid is like a one don't want to put that in your face when it comes to skincare acids, most of them are around a 3 or a 4 pH, which means they're going to be a little bit more acidic than your skin, so they are going to slough things off just the way we need them to. If you want a video on chemical versus physical exfoliants, maybe we can do that in the future, but for now, all we need to worry about is understanding that these are a chemical exfoliant, which means they chemically dissolve the outer layers of the skin. Do you remember the seven layers of the skin? We have a couple at the top, which are the epidermis, and a couple at the bottom, which are the dermis. The dermis is really important and you don't want to mess with that. Now the epidermis are the ones that we can touch, we can work with, and that we can constantly slough off. Especially when you're dealing with acne or if you're dealing with the brightening of the skin, it's those top layers that we want to worry about. Now your skin is constantly renewing. It's a cycle, whereas the dermis is creating new skin cells and pushing them to the top. And once they get to the top, they float off into the abyss, kind of like magical little fairies um, going to spread cheer, which is actually just the buildup of dust that's on my countertop. Now, a lot of times with acne or with dull skin, there's a problem in this system. These top layers of the skin aren't leaving the way they're supposed to. It's like a guest that came over for a sleepover and then decided to stay for an entire week. <laughs> and these top layers just won't leave. And a lot of times when you have acne or when you have a buildup of oil or sebum, that is creating like a glue in the top of these layers. And it's like a glue or a cement that is holding these little skin flakes down and stopping them from exfoliating off. And when that happens, not only does your skin look dull, but acne starts to build up. Because there's like this big pasty plug on the top, this big pasty layer, your skin can't renew. Things start to get clogged up and backed up, and that can create pimples and a breeding ground for bacteria. So AHA acids and BHA acids go in to kind of clear that out. So what exactly are these magical AHA and BHA acids and how do they actually break down that gunk in the skin so that our skin can renew itself and look bright and beautiful? When it comes down to it, AHA acids and BHA acids are an organic compound. This organic compound is made up of a carboxylic acid and a hydroxy group that are held together by carbon molecules. And I know that sounds like a whole bunch of confusing chemical science gibberish, but basically what it is, it's a organic compound and the AHA acid is held together by one carbon atom and BHA acids are held together by two carbon atoms. You can see how similar these acids are. So those AHA acids are hydro or water soluble, which means they can kind of be broken down and activated when they come in contact with water. And BHA acids are fat, oil, or lipid soluble, which basically means when they come in contact with a lipid, such as a fat or an oil, that's when they start to break down and get activated. And the way that I always remembered this in chemistry class is like really stupid, but 
when you think about it, water is like refreshing, so you're like, ah, oh, water is refreshing. So A-H-A-H-A stands for water soluble, whereas B-H-A, when you look at a B, it kind of looks like a juicy butt, and a real juicy butt has usually got a lot of fat on it. So I was able to remember that B-H-A acids are fat or lipid soluble uh, because the B looks like a, a nice booty. <laughs> <laughs> so because AHA acids are water soluble, they are usually better for people who are worried about wrinkles, worried about aging, reversing sun damage, and for dry skin. Whereas BHA acids are normally better for people with acne, because acne is usually associated with a lot of oil. And as we remember from our juicy butt analogy, the BHA acids are oil soluble. So acne, oil, kind of go hand in hand. So what are the actual types of AHA acids? Even if a bottle or a label doesn't say AHA, it could say something like glycolic acid or lactic acid or citric acid or vitamin C. Now all of those are actually AHA acids with slight differences. For instance, glycolic acid is personally one of my favorites. It has one of the smallest molecules, so it does penetrate the deepest, which means if you're working on deep wrinkles, if you're working on cystic acne, if you're your skin needs a little bit of help, glycolic is the way to go. It's also, it can be synthesized in a laboratory, but it's normally made from sugar cane, so it's pretty natural. Um, lactic acid kind of sounds like lactose. You heard of lactose-free milk? Lactose is the sugar within milk, and our bodies can also produce it. But lactic acid is normally derived from that. And there is also malic acid, which is derived from apples or pears. There is citric acid, which is otherwise known as vitamin C, which normally comes from oranges and limes and lemons. And then there's also tartaric acid, which comes from grapes and bananas. Now, even though these AHA acids are very similar, they do have differences. Again, it's just a couple molecules and a little bit of the chemical structure that's different. But that means for different people, it's going to work differently. Ethnic skin is going to see different results. If you have certain allergies, you're gonna see different results. And sometimes if we use one skincare product for years, our skin can actually build up a tolerance. And in that case, kind of switching between acids could show you more results if you've been using the same one for a really long time. Next, let's talk about BHA acids. And when it comes to BHA acids, there is really just one that is used in skincare. You're probably really familiar with it, and for all of us acne sufferers out there, it is salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is actually derived from the willow bark or the willow plant, and it actually functions as the plant's hormone. But when extracted, it really works on getting rid of the gunk and the oil that's really holding those skin cells into our skin. So for people with acne, a BHA salicylic acid is usually one of the best performing and the most effective. Then again, as acne sufferers, we also know that sometimes our skin builds up a resistance to that and it stops working, um, or it just doesn't work as well, or doesn't work as deep as we need it to. And there are other BHA acids out there, such as a compound called carnitine, um, which is usually found in our muscles, but there really is no practical application for that in skincare. So when it comes to skincare, pretty much the only BHA acid that you can use is salicylic acid. So with all of these different choices and their similarities and differences, which ones are the best for acne? Bottom line is that all of these can help that exfoliation process, which means helping pimples come to the surface and stop renewing. But it's also important to remember that none of these acids will kill bacteria or stop or diminish oil production. So even though these can make a huge difference in your skin, they aren't actually killing bacteria. They're just helping your skin, kind of aiding its natural process along if something isn't working properly. So when it comes to it, I'm sure almost anyone who's dealt with acne has tried salicylic acid. And normally I've found that that does work pretty well. But again, because it's normally a natural compound, it doesn't always work as quickly. Sometimes it can be like a waiting game where it takes time to see results with salicylic acid, which can be a little bit frustrating. And then like we were talking about earlier, sometimes your skin builds up a tolerance. For instance, I had used salicylic acid for maybe five years. And all of a sudden, that salicylic acid wasn't working anymore because my skin had built up a resistance. And for me, I really loved the glycolic acid because it went deeper and it just showed more benefits to my skin. So when it comes to 
treating your acne, make sure that you're looking at the back of those labels and you know what you're using. So that way if a product works, you can tie that to an active ingredient. Or if a product doesn't work, you can tie that to an active ingredient um, and kind of understand what your skin personally does and doesn't like. Something else to consider is that not all acne skin is oily skin. Even if you've got pizza grease shooting out of your pores like a squirt gun, your skin might actually be dry and just overproducing oil to compensate. A really good way to test if your skin is naturally oily or naturally dry is to touch it right when you get out of the shower. Right when you get out of the shower, if your skin feels tight and papery, that means that you've actually got dry skin. And sometimes when your skin is too dry, it goes into hyperdrive, hyper mode. It creates its own oil production and then your skin looks like an oily mess all day, but it's really because your skin is severely dehydrated and trying to compensate. Whereas if you get out of the shower and your skin kind of feels like cookie dough, kind of buttery, that probably means that you do have naturally oily skin. So that being the case, if you're someone who suffers from acne, you think that you have this oily skin, but when you get out of the shower, your skin is actually pretty tight, that means that you have dry skin and something like glycolic acid or another AHA acid may be more beneficial to you. And for me, I mean, for 15 years that I've had acne, I was like, oh my God, I have the most oily skin. And the truth was, I was using salicylic acid to try to break that down, and it wasn't always working. So for me, I think that the reason my skin loves glycolic acid and maybe citric acid, vitamin C, so much is because my skin was a bit dry. It just needed help with that exfoliation process. And those AHA acids work better on those top layers of the skin, which is what my skin personally needed help with. And then when you say goodbye to those top layers that are kind of clogging everything up, your skin can renew itself, and it won't trap pimples underneath that top um, plasticky gross layer. <laughs> Biology is sexy! <laughs> it's also really important to remember that when you are exfoliating, whether it is chemical or whether it is physical, you are removing top layers of your epidermis, top layers of your skin, which means that if you go out in the sun, the sun is going to have an easier time penetrating, which means more sun damage and more wrinkles. So if you are exfoliating at all, you should be wearing a sunscreen, um, especially if you're on acne medications, because acne medications usually thin out the skin as well. So guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I don't know if you can tell, but I love talking about the science behind beauty, even more so than I love doing makeup tutorials. And sometimes I avoid it because I'm worried that I'm going to bore people or that people don't want to hear about it. Um, but on the video that I did about the five acne products that made my acne worse, a lot of people commented saying that it was really helpful the way I explained things. So if I can do that and be of service to you, that is my goal. My goal is always to help you live beautifully inside and out. And I don't believe that beauty is just something that we have. I believe it's something that we make. It's something that we earn and it's something that we learn. Learn through education and understanding ourselves and earn by helping the world around us and just becoming more vibrant, kind-hearted people. So I really hope that this helped you learn a little bit about beauty. I hope that you are having an amazing day. And if you did like this video or if you want more nerding out science talks, um, be sure to give this video a thumbs up so that I know to create more of these. Always remember that I love you and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.